Hey, it's AP, and today I'm going to share my top four takeaways from building my very first Gunpla. Check it out. I finally took the plunge and purchased my first Gundam kit, or Gunpla. Now, what's Gundam or Gunpla, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Gundam is a Japanese anime franchise created by what is now known as Bandai Namco. You know Bandai. They own the IPs to things like uh, Dark Souls, Tekken, and Pac-Man. And they produce video games and anime, as well as some of the most beautiful modern model kits out there. I've actually done a couple builds in the past of their Star Wars model kits. I'll leave links to those in the description below. They're really fun kits to build. And the Gundam franchise is kind of like the Marvel or DC Universe. There's a bunch of different timelines and series, but they all fall within the, the Gundam universe. In a nutshell, the series started in 1979 with Mobile Suit Gundam, which, according to the Wikipedia, defined the real robot mecha anime genre by featuring giant robots called Mobile Suits. Do you get it? Big robots or mechas piloted by humans like you and me and defending Earth and the orbital colonies in the Earth-Moon system. Good. We're all together. <laughs> this series became very popular and of course spawned a merchandise line, and Bandai started producing model kits of the Gundam mechas in the early 80s, and we're still going strong today with tons of kits in all different shapes and sizes. These kits are affectionately called Gunpla, which is a combination of Gundam and plastic. Gunpla. Drop that term at your next model maker made up and you will really impress your friends. You probably won't. <laughs> a pal of mine convinced me to take a dive into Gunpla land, and while I was going to do a build video, I figured I'd spare you from the boredom of watching me nip parts off of the sprues and just show you what I did and share some insights as a first time gunpla -er, or gunpla builder. Now, before I do that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on future episodes. Okay, I'd like you to meet my very first gunpla, the Dark Hound. Ow! Dark Hound! Now, I picked Dark Hound because, A, I liked his name. It kind of reminded me of something from Game of Thrones, but I also liked the colors. Yes, I'm one of those people who pick sports teams. <laughs> because of the colors of their uniforms. No, no, I picked uh, the black and red because those are Sith colors and I have to keep within the Star Wars family of color ways. Uh, so I picked the Dark Hound. He's super cool. He even has a lightsaber uh, attachment toy. There's actually uh, uh, two of these. At first glance, you would think that you could, you know, kind of play with these and, and you know, do stuff with them, but you can't. You really can't. Uh, or you, you, you probably shouldn't because they are fragile. Um, they are, there's lots of pieces involved with these kits. So many pieces. Uh, just, uh, it just, it, it's, it's amazing the number of pieces involved with these kits. Um, what else is really cool is that they transform. Or at least this one does. I don't know about all the other Gundam Gunplas out there, but this actually transforms. Oops, he's falling over. He actually transforms into a uh, a little uh, needle-nosed fighter craft, which is pretty neat. But, uh, I have not tried to just transform them yet uh, because I don't want to break them, and it took forever to build this kit, uh, or it seems like it took forever to build this kit. But yeah, I, I love how he came out. Uh, there's lots of posability to them. Uh, he can bend his legs. I mean, look at that. You can just do all kinds of stuff, and they make little uh, things where you can kind of mount them so they're, they look like they're in flight. I might buy one or 3D print one. Uh, there are lots of different hands that you can install, so one's holding the, uh, the gun, one can just be a closed fist, one can be an open palm. Uh, like there's, I think I have like eight other hand Thing poses uh, in, in this kit. Oh, his hand fell off. <laughs> this is a snap kit, and uh, as, as are all the Bandai's. Do they even make glue kits anymore? I don't know. But uh, so yeah, so you don't need any glues uh, to, uh, to put this together. They all snap, snap together. So yeah, I actually, I, uh, I thought this was, uh, yeah, this came out, this came out very nice, and uh, they will look good on my 
uh, my shelf. So now that you've seen my beautiful work of art here, here are four things I learned as I made my way through my very first build. There are a bunch of different grades of kits, and the kit grade really is an indicator of the scale. So for example, there's the high grade, which is a 1144 scale, or about five inches tall, all the way up to the perfect grade, which is 160 scale, or about 12 inches tall. The Dark Hound kit here is a master grade, which is 1100 scale, at about seven inches tall. When I started my shopping, I knew that I wanted a bit of a challenge, but nothing too challenging, because I knew I was going to film it, and it already takes forever to film something, and doing a more complicated build would just have taken forever squared. So the master grade seemed like a safe bet. The build time was maybe four hours when it's all said and done, and there's probably a couple hundred pieces, if not more. Now, if cost is a factor, the higher the grade, the higher the price point. I think the Dark Hound was close to $50. A perfect grade can be over 100 and a high grade could be in the 20s and lower. So there is a price point for everyone. So when selecting your kit, take into consideration cost and skill level. If you're new and just want to experiment, try the high grade or master grade. If you want to go all in and time and price isn't a factor, then check out the perfect grade. There are some big and beautiful kits in the PG line. Oh, and shop around. Don't just go to Amazon. There are a bunch of awesome sites you can buy these from, often with way better pricing than the Amazon. The difference between Star Wars Bandai and Gunpla. Now, one of the biggest differences you'll notice if you've done Bandai Star Wars kits is the number of pieces. I would say a normal Bandai Star Wars kit is a third of what this kit is, if not less. There are so many pieces, hundreds of pieces. The torso alone had something like 50 pieces in it. It's crazy, and there's a ton of detail. And if you've done a Star Wars character kit like Boba Fett or a Stormtrooper, you'll appreciate the level of posability is just as high, if not greater, here. Like, I could do a feature stop-motion film with this guy with the number of movable joints he has. Tools, all right, tools. There's apparently a bunch of Gunpla tools out there that I didn't really know about. I mostly do resin kits or the old school MPCs and Ertels where you cut from the sprue, sand, and paint. Now, because these kits are molded in colored plastic, you really don't have to paint them, which means that getting a nice clean cut off the sprue and removing the gate in a way that any marks blend into the plastic is key to a successful build. Now. I ended up getting a pair of God Hand Nippers, which are apparently the best of the best to get really clean cuts. And I'll be honest though, for the price I paid, I was expecting a lot more. Now, again, I come from the resin kit world where nippers aren't really a thing, so maybe there's a learning curve here, but I was just not impressed. And also, while I would normally use a file to clean up the gates, I found I did more bad than good. So I highly recommend a nail polishing block and various high grit sandpapers to get a smooth, polished finish on your plastic pieces. I have a lot of dulled parts here because I didn't have the right sanding and polishing stuff. So something to think about. If you're new to Bandai, no paint, required kits, get a nice pair of nippers, high grit sandpaper, and a polishing block. Someone makes a polishing and sanding kit specifically for Gunpla, and my pal uses it and really likes it. I'll leave a link below for you to check it out. I haven't tried it. It's a bit pricey, but I'm learning that Gunpla is a pricey hobby in general. <laughs> All right, instructions. Unless you read Japanese, the instructions are going to be an exercise in picture reading. <laughs> Now, while they do a good job of visually describing all the steps, I know I'm missing some good nuggets of information because I don't read the language. So keep that in mind. Use the reference photos when in doubt. Oh, and also make sure you follow the pictures carefully. With so many steps and pieces, it's easy to do something incorrectly. I ended up having to redo the knees because I put them together backwards uh, so we didn't bend. So will I do this again? Heck yes, I will. While my OCD won't allow me to clutter my shelves with these, I will certainly try doing a perfect grade when my bench clears up. There are some beautiful kits in the Gundam line, Gunpla line, and I had a blast putting this Dark Hound together. So definitely check these kits out. 
Are you a first time gum plotter? Are you about to take the plunge? <laughs> Did you find this video helpful? Well, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. I do way more than talk about gunpla. Thanks so much for watching. I am going to rule the galaxy. I am the Dark Hound. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>